Glory to Jesus Christ. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, brothers. Hello, sisters in Christ. I hope that you all are having a blessed day so far. It's good to see you guys. I'm honored to be your sister in Christ, and I thank you. I appreciate you coming to spend a little bit of time with me to see what the Lord is saying. So, guys, this is an urgent, this is a serious word. This is a prophetic warning. This is a prophetic warning, and the prophetic warning is that a surge is coming. A surge is coming. Hallelujah. Um, this word began to manifest, guys. The minute I released the video, prepare for some turbulence. I believe it was like two or three days ago. Prepare for some turbulence. In that video, the Lord was um, using me to speak to you about the increased gun violence and things like that. The minute that video was released, that's when the Lord began to speak to me about the surge that was coming. But I didn't really understand the fullness of the of what he was trying to tell me up until last night. Basically, last night, God gave me some key points that he wanted me to speak to you guys about. So the word for today is that I saw a surge. I literally saw a surge. Yesterday, I was in my bedroom and as I was wrapping up this word, I looked up, God instructed me to look up and I began to see like a ball of wind, a ball of fire, you know, just all types of um, elements that you would see in the earth. And so I just felt led to look up the definition of surge. And I learned that surge is actually a powerful force that we will see in the natural. We typically associate surge with a flood or, you know, a hurricane or some kind of a disaster, if that makes sense. And so after reading that, I thought, oh God. Um, and he said, yes. He said, we need to prepare for the surge that's coming. We need to prepare for the surge. That is what I saw, guys. I saw a surge coming. So I began to pray and ask God to, to use me, to speak through me, to deliver this message in a way that you all will understand it, but not be in fear. Because God is saying that many of people tend to draw near to fear. And, you know, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. God gave us a sound mind. He wants us to have a sound mind. He wants us to be in peace with him. Because see, the thing is, is that when you are in Christ, we have the Psalm 91 promise. The Psalm 91 promise covers us. It protects us. And so although we are dealing with the chaos of the world and all of these things are happening around us in these disasters and so on and so forth, we still can stand firm in knowing that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is our Lord. He is our shepherd. He is our provider. He is our protector. So this word is not coming to you to put you in a spirit of fear, but it's coming to you to give you knowledge, to give you foundation, to help you prepare, because we know that all uh, warnings come before destruction. And so we know that God loves us so much that he will warn us before the destruction. And so that is why I am here, people of God, to deliver the warning so that we as a body can be prepared for what's to come, okay? Okay. But before we get into the word, people of God, let's go ahead and bow our heads and let's give the Lord the glory this morning. Let's give him the honor. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we love you so much, Lord. We come to you with an open heart and open mind. We come to you humbly. We come to you hungry for the word because we know that all things that you give us is for our good. We understand, Lord God, that because you love us so much that you will give us warning. You will give us instruction before we experience the turbulence, before the destruction, before the chaos comes. And we thank you, Lord God, for forewarning us. We thank you for giving us an advance notice as to prepare us for the world that we are living in in this time. Father God, not my will, but yours. I ask, Lord God, that you replace anything that is not of you and fill me with the Holy Spirit word the word that you have assigned for me to deliver to your beloved today. Father God, your word says in Hebrews chapter 12 that you chastise those that you call your son, that you discipline those that you love. And so Lord God, in this message, we want to receive all the instruction, all the, the love that we can possibly get out of you so that way we can take this stuff, put it in our lifestyles and move forward with your purpose for our 
lives. Father God, we just give you the glory. Father God, we understand that you are our source. You are the reason that we breathe. You are the alpha. You are the omega. We ask that you come into our presence. We ask that you bless us, Father. We ask that you be with us as we are in fellowship right now, together as a body, to hear what it is that you have to say to us right now. In Jesus' holy name, we pray and amen. So guys, again, I saw a surge coming um, and the surge is um, broken down into different parts. God wants me to reiterate the turbulence that I mentioned in the previous video as it relates to an increase in gun violence, an increase in gun sales. All right. An increase in people needing, feeling the need to buy guns to protect themselves, their families, their establishments is still in motion okay but there is an additional surge that is coming so i'm going to go ahead and tell you what god gave me he gave me some some key points to hit upon that we should expect to see the surge is going to be an increase in influx of certain things that are coming outside of the increase of the gun violence remember guys test the spirit i have a video in the description box that will teach you how to test the spirit give you some techniques on how to test the spirit i can't add to this word and i can't take away so if you have questions about this warning please take it to the lord okay because i'm just going to give you what the father is saying right so the first thing that God showed me outside of the gun violence, he, he showed me that there's going to be a surge in our com computer system, in our world's computer system. God is saying that we're going to begin to have instances where when we get ready to go and take care of some personal business, they're not going to be able to find our information. I saw birth certificates. God is saying that when we try to go get a replacement birth certificate, there may be an issue with us getting birth certificates. There may be an issue with us getting our social security cards, um, specifically for our children. And also newborn children are going to be having a hard time getting their vital statistic information. God is saying that we also need to be paying attention to our bank accounts. There are people that are outside of the body of Christ that we're going to be able to see the witness of people experiencing loss of money in their bank accounts, in their checking accounts. Um, I know that has a lot to do with the transfer of the wealth from the wicked. But there will be some small inconsistencies in the banking system when people that have checking accounts and savings accounts. And also God is saying that there's going to be a, a rise in our identity being stolen, you know, identity theft. And God is saying that, you know, because we're on the computers more now instead of being in a physical place, the identity theft crimes are going to increase and so God is saying that we really need to pay attention to our credit card information. We need to be careful about the sites that we're going on to purchase things online and so on and so forth. God is saying to exercise wisdom and how we are shopping online because there is going to be an increase in identity theft. The second thing that God showed me is that there is going to be a surge in negative influence against our children. I hear God saying to for parents to pay attention to what children are doing, pay attention to what children are watching on TV, pay attention to the conversations that your teenagers are having over the phone, check their phones, check their pictures, check their text messages, because the enemy is filtering itself through the devices of what our children use to watch videos to listen to music and things like that god is saying that we need to be paying attention to the type of programs that our children are watching and also there's an influx of abuse and we've heard that there's been a lot of um, domestic violence that has taken place since the COVID 19 as it relates to relationships husband and wives but there's also an increase in abuse sexual abuse towards children and it is happening in families now so when you send your child to the grandparents house or to the aunt and uncle's house we need to be paying attention god is saying that the sexual abuse is is increasing the incest is increasing in families and god is saying that we need to be um, aware of that as well and then god showed me witchcraft witchcraft is rising in the church god showed me that there are many people who have been following christ for many of years they have been following christ people of god for so many years and they've been praying and they've been asking god for things and, and and for some reason those things have not manifested they have not come to pass and as a result 
the, the child of God has become weary. And so they are resorting to other means to try to get what they think that they're supposed to have. God showed me that many of us are consulting mediums and psychics. Some of us are researching witchcraft online. We're researching certain type of prayers that we think that we can pray to get things going because we have seen that the enemy has been able to succeed, but we're not. And so we are deciding to kind of step into the realm of witchcraft is what I hear. God is saying that we're going to begin to see an increase of witchcraft in the church. People are not going to be prophesying from the Holy Spirit anymore. People are not going to come to you from the Holy Spirit, but they're going to be coming to you from a spirit of divination, a spirit of familiarity. Hallelujah. And God is saying that we must ask him for the discernment. And God is saying that we have got to be discerning. This is a time where we have got to test the spirit. This is a time where we should be paying attention and observing the fruit of of the person that is feeding you the word of God, observing the fruit of the people that are prophesying over you. We have got to pay attention to the people that we're following, the churches that we're joining, and we need to make sure that we are consulting with the Lord concerning the people that we are receiving into our lives, even paying attention to the people that are praying over us. Hallelujah. Because not everybody can pray over you, child of God, paying attention to what is happening in the prayer call, what is being said, paying attention to how um, that person is uh, delivering the message, making sure that it matches up with scripture, making sure that it is biblical because there are many children of God who started out with God. They started out with Jesus Christ and now they have resorted into witchcraft. Okay. And so the word that's in the Bible that talks about how even the elect will be deceived in these last days is true. There are many of us and I fell prey to this too, guys. Okay. Many of us need to reevaluate our connections and who we're following in this hour as it relates to ministry, as it relates to the church, because there are many that are falling prey to witchcraft. And then the last thing that God showed me was our food supply. He says that our food supply is there's going to be a shortage in food supply. At some point in time, we are going to begin to see a shortage in our food supply, but also contamination. And we are already seeing that, guys, where there are certain meats, there are certain fruits and there are certain vegetables that are being taken off the shelf because they found bacteria. It makes the food not safe to eat. God is saying that we need to pay attention to our food. We need to pray over our food. We need to ask God to bless our food, to cleanse our food, to sanctify our food before we intake it. We need to be checking our food, wash your fruits and vegetables, your chicken, your meat. Make sure you're cooking your food at, at the temperature that is recommended, okay? Pay attention to the expiration dates. Pay attention to the smell of your meats. If you're a meat eater, stick within a diet that is low in certain things that are known to be contaminated. So if you're if you're seeing that, for example, blueberries are always contamination, well then don't buy them. You know, if you're seeing that the chicken, something's always going on with chicken, they always taking it off the shelf or they always have a news broadcast about chicken, well then don't buy the chicken. You know what I'm saying? This is a time that we're be exercising wisdom. We should be exercising wisdom and making those choices because wisdom is what gives us the perceptive on how to make choices for our lives. And the purpose of that is to help us stay safe, to keep us from out of harm's way. So that is what God showed me that the surge is coming, the surge. And also there's going to be more chaos. There's going to be more chaos. And guys, you already see that the COVID-19 has actually increased. And so we can say that that's another part of the surge. But you all can see that with your own eyes, that the COVID-19 has actually gotten worse. And I just put a video in the community section of this channel, and it's called um, The Trickery of the Enemy. This is something that I had spoke to you guys about. I released the word where it talked about how when we were going through the riots and the anger, how we were exposing ourselves to the COVID-19. So when you guys get a chance, watch that video again, and that will give you the answer as to why we're dealing with the increase in the COVID-19. So people of God, that is what the word is for today. We are going to see a surge. There is a surge coming in the areas that I just discussed, in the areas that I just pointed out. And people of God, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that, you know, we got to stop playing it safe, people of God. 
we got to stop playing it safe. And I know some people are going to come for me or come against me because I'm saying what I'm saying, but it's okay because I am saying this from the heart of God. I'm saying it from a spirit of, of, of love and compassion. I'm not coming to you with condemnation because I am not perfect. I myself fall short of the glory of God. And this word is applicable to me and my family as well. So I am not exempt from what's being said today. But I just hear the spirit of the Lord saying, to stop playing it safe. We're sharing prophetic words that speak about blessings, that speak about promises, that speak about what we're going to get and all this other kind of stuff. But the minute the Lord uses the prophet to speak to you about what's important, which are disasters, which are the times, the seasons that we're living in, in the end times, then all of a sudden, there's no interest. All of a sudden, nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to recognize the times that we're living in. And God is saying that we have got to stop playing it safe because again, warning comes before destruction. So we need to take a balanced approach to the church. Yes, God is releasing miracles. He's releasing blessings. He's releasing all of those things to us, even as we are in the storm, even, even as we are living in the end times, because we have to have these things to be able to pursue the mission, which is to win souls for the kingdom of God, to work for God, to work for the kingdom. Yes, we have to have these things, but we also have to be mindful, right? The times that we in, we cannot ignore the times that we're in. We cannot act like we can't see these things happen. We can't turn off the TV because somebody is is being used by God to speak to you about the warnings Some, because God is using somebody to speak to you about the times we are in the end times, people of God. And the Bible teaches us that these are the things that we are going to encounter during these times. And so as a servant of the Lord, as someone that hears from God, that speaks on behalf of God, it is my job to deliver these words to you. And it's not to make you feel condemned. It's not to make you feel like you're not worthy. It's not to make you feel like I'm better than you because I'm not. It's because I'm doing my job. It's because I'm doing what God called me to do. It's because I have to be obedient, right? And tell you guys, you know, I think about Jeremiah. Jeremiah was called as a prophet and God told Jeremiah that the people were not going to listen to him. But at the end of the day, God still called Jeremiah to, to prophesy to the people, even though God knew that the people weren't going to listen. But the purpose of that was that God need the people to understand that if you don't listen, that's on you. But know that I have sent my prophet to give you the word. And so when the destruction comes, when the chaos comes, you cannot deny that you never heard the word. You cannot deny that you have not been forewarned about what's coming. OK, so, guys, I'm not saying that this is you I'm, by no means. I'm just putting this out here. Just make sure that when you are listening to profited words, whoever you're following, that there is a balance. There is a balance. If you're hearing uh, blessings and promises all the time and you're not hearing words of instruction, words of correction, words of warning, then something is not right. People of God, we are in the end times. We are experiencing destruction. We are experiencing chaos. We are experiencing all kinds of things in the earth and we need to be aware of it. Okay. So God didn't give us a spirit of fear, however, during this time. And we are to take hold of our Psalm 91 promise. What does the word say? The word says that as we dwell in the shelter of the Most High, as long as we do that with the whole heart, we stay in the presence of the Lord. What does the word says? The word says that the enemy will not come near our tent, but we will only be in position to see the judgment of the wicked. And God will even dispatch his angels concerning us so that we do not hit our foot against the stone. We have Psalm 91 promise over our lives. And as long as we are in the presence of the most high God. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter what's happening around us. People of God, we are still going to prosper. We are still going to move forward. We are still going to have the ability to fulfill the mission that God has on our lives. Okay. We are still going to have, be able to have joy. We're still going to be able to have peace, even in the midst of the chaos. Why? Because as we are in the world, we are not of this world. Okay. And if we do come into contact, if we do happen to come into contact with evil in some way, it's going to work out for our good. The Bible tells us that what was meant for evil will turn out for our good. So it, it's a win-win situation when you are a child of God. We are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ and you all need to remember that. Right, so that is the word for today. Remember to test the spirit.
I love you guys. We are here on purpose to glorify God in Jesus' holy name. I love, love, love you guys. I want you to be blessed. All right. Remember to share this video with someone that you think needs to hear it. I thank you guys for subscribing and liking Shanika Byers United for Christ. I also thank you all for becoming a member of this ministry. I'm headed out of here, guys. Love you. Bye.